let's check up Windows 10 today. Now this could be done on Windows 7 or any of them really, but I wanted to actually do a more deeper dive into Windows and explain how programs get access to your computer, how what programs are accessing your computers, and you can actually see what all's connecting to the internet and you see all this flow back and forth. I've been highly critical over Windows 10 over the years, but I think you'll really understand why. Also, if you're needing to clean off a virus or you're just like, my computer just acted kind of funny and you want to figure out why, this is the definitive video for you. And I'm going to be talking and going over things that have never been covered on YouTube. So with that said, let's get on the desktop and get into it. All right, to assist us in this kind of browsing through, I created a batch file. You don't have to run this. You could just look at all the commands it's running and then just take the things that you like out of it or fork it and make it your own. It's all open source. So just go to GitHub, Chris Titus Tech, Windows 10 Checkup, and we'll click on checkup.bat. And we'll look at the raw file here. This is everything going on, and I'm going to break it down. I put pauses on each one of these subroutines basically as it goes through. And we're going to do a checkup on this PC. We'll copy this. This is the raw file. And we're going to launch into PowerShell. Uh, now, I'm just going to do regular PowerShell. You don't need to do PowerShell with admin. And anytime you're running scripts, honestly, unless you need to modify your system, you don't really want to run as admin. A checkup script should really be checking the local user to see what kind of privileges they have. To download this, we'll do curl. We'll type our actual raw file in. And then we're just going to output this as checkup.bat. And if we do a DIR, you'll see checkup.bat right there. And we'll just do checkup.bat. I use tab to complete. So you can easily just do CHE and then tab. And we'll run this. It'll start out, it'll do a system info. You can actually type system info and get this from a regular command prompt. That's the first command that is being displayed here. What it shows us is one, when was this installed? I actually installed and redid this system a couple months back uh, at the end of 2020. You can see it was booted today of the making of this video. Obviously, I made this a bit in the past. And then what kind of hot fixes have been installed? The big thing about this, you might have probably a lot more than me because I don't do feature updates. I only do security updates as I just want a stable Windows system. And I mainly just game. I don't really do any other shenanigans on here. Now, Look at the installed on date here. Make sure this is somewhat recent. If this is like years in the past, chances are you're really vulnerable. So run your security updates. If you're not sure how to do that, I made an entire video how to just run security updates. And those are super quick. You know, they're not gonna waylay you a couple hours like many of the feature updates do. Next, UAC settings. This should always say 0.0x1. 0 .0 if it says 0.0, .0 you might be compromised, you're vulnerable. And I'm, I'm not a big UAC fan at all, which is user account control. But I always have it on. I just put it to never notify if I just don't want the pop-ups coming at me. Either way, just make sure it says x1. Registered antivirus, this says, hey, what antivirus am I using? I'm just using the built-in Windows Defender. If you're looking for a paid one, I'd recommend, I think, ESET right now. But those change from time to time. And I'd never recommend any free antivirus. If you're going to go with free, just stick with Windows Defender. Mounted disks, this just kind of shows you what all's mounted here. And if you need to look at that, we can just pull up our Explorer. And you can see I, I have a lot mounted. Chances are when you run this, you're probably only going to have one or two disks but that's what it's showing. Environment variables. This is kind of interesting. It kind of shows you what all your paths are and if there's any other shenanigans going on, you can actually kind of look through everything that's being done to your Windows. Is there any program putting like a password in here? Is there any special variable that you're like, hey, wait a second, what is that? You can actually look at this. You can actually change this too. A good way to interface with your environment variables on Windows is we can right click this, hit run, and then do system dm.cpl. This brings the old system properties back, which is way better than what Windows 10 has right now. We hit environment variables, and you can see there's so much crossover. If we want to add specific paths, we can do that. We can change our path right here. We can add specific system variables down here or remove them if there's improper ones in here. But don't just delete these all willy-nilly because many programs will use these. So be very cautious when editing this part. 
installed software. This kind of just kind of goes, hey, what all is installed on this system? And it just gives you a long readout of everything. And also towards the bottom here, you can see the system information and group identification, anything kind of out of place. If you want to interface directly with your programs installed on your PC, I really like appwiz.cpl. This is this old school way of uninstalling stuff, but I really like this because I can get right to all the programs I need to uninstall and it works better than the built-in one in Windows 10. Uh, this is actually the old school like Windows 7 version. You can also add and remove Windows features easily from here, which is also very, very buried and hard to get to in Windows 10. But with that simple command, you can easily get in here and do that. I like to just kind of spit out, hey, what users are on this account? Right now, it's just mainly Titus was my username, but administrator is always there on every install. It's disabled by default, so don't freak out if you see that. Groups, you look for anything without an asterisk. Everything with an asterisk is basically the basic groups that come with every Windows install. Administrative groups, look at the members. Again, administrator is disabled by default. And I, I am actually an admin. Now you can change this around and have an admin user and a regular user. Uh, you can do every which way, but this just kind of says, hey, who controls this PC and spits it out for you. Currently logged in users, right? that's me. Copy to clipboard right here. What's in my clipboard? Right now I think it's just a quote mark, but this is one thing I got criticized for when I recommended RoboForm. A lot of people love password managers, but a lot of them use the clipboard to copy them. To me, that's a security flaw. So if your question, hey, does mine copy to clipboard? Use it, copy a password to clipboard, run this tool, see if it spits out your password that you just copied. If so, I don't know, might think about switching <laughs> if this is, worries you at all. But it is an important vulnerability and something that doesn't really get talked about very much. And if you wanna actually clear out the clipboard usually on every reset it clears out but you can actually type in and like uh, echo a uh, null to the clipboard and pipe it to like clip.exe if you wanted to clear out your clipboard or you could do like the dot net way which takes forever either way um, moving on to unintended files there's nothing there but sometimes when you make a custom install a lot of times either i've seen even computer manufacturers do this They'll leave behind unattended files with like an admin file account or a, a account user and account password in XML, which you can actually read and it'll spit that out. SAM and system backups just kind of shows registry backups. And these are really good for hackers. You can get a hold of them and decrypt them and see all the usernames on there and change things around a bit. And that's it for this batch script, just a real basic one, but we're not done. Let's move on to TCP view. There's something that I have in that script, but I wanted to just show this. I think it does a better job of visualizing it. It shows everything that's happening with our system here and all the system processes, what's connecting to the internet, and it gives us process IDs. So there's things that happen on our computer that we're just not aware of. A good example of this is all of this right here. My Asus motherboard is super chatty. Look at this. It's taking up a couple ports and it is saying, hey, it's sending data back and forth between Asus and my motherboard, and I don't even have any of their stuff installed. This is just one of the downsides to Windows is you just don't have much control over some of these back-end processes. This whole thing is actually one thing, which is the cloud drive. This is Synology drive. I use this to basically have a localized Dropbox. Discord, not much needs to be said. Uh, JHI service, I think that's like an Intel service of some sort. My Logitech is, you know, phoning home to Logitech. NVIDIA has a whole bunch of different processes and telemetry. That's pretty normal as well. There's ASUS again with ROG Live Service, Steam, and Service Host. Synergy, I use that to connect uh, three or four computers together with just one keyboard and mouse. And I have Team Viewer for just remote access sometimes and VNC server, VSS service is like a shadow copy service. I'm not sure why that would actually be reaching out. Maybe, oh, oh yeah, never mind. I, I'm doing a, a backup to my Synology drive that uses shadow copy, so that makes sense. This is just a good way to kind of pick through your system and seeing exactly, hey, what ports are being used by what? When you're seeing like SVC host, that's mainly just how chatty Windows is. When I'm making fun of Windows and saying, hey, it's phoning home a whole bunch, yeah, 
I ain't lying. All of that right there is Windows. That's Microsoft chatting back and forth using your computer. That's a lot. It's not exactly new either. This has just gotten progressively worse over the years. Moving on from what our computer is using for the network connection, let's see, do a deeper dive into some of these processes because really SVC host, can we tell what all SVC host is doing? Because this doesn't tell us a whole bunch. Looking at Process Explorer, which both these tools, TCP View and Process Explorer, are sys internals. Uh, I think I actually downloaded TCP View from Microsoft's website. It could be wrong there. But either way, these are really old tools, but I've used them to troubleshoot viruses that don't have a solution yet and be able to remove things that, frankly, antivirus pr companies have problems removing. You can get in here and really drill down and see what's happening. So our SVC host, you can see a whole bunch of different stuff happening. You can see search app right here, shell experience host. Now these are things I've actually disabled. Uh, it shouldn't be doing any indexing, but there's so many searches and things attached to Windows that that just kind of happens. But flipping down here a little bit more, you can kind of get a good feel of what is tying into what. I have power toys here with like color picker and power launcher. NV container is actually going and doing a couple other things. You see NV share, which a lot of that I think might be doing a lot of my in-home streaming, which I do stream from this computer. So that would be correct. You can see it also lists the description and company name over on the left and right hand corner. And then towards the bottom, you're going to run into more of your actual processes that you're launching or auto running. So definitely pay attention to this. I think it's really kind of cool to see all these different things that happen and how these programs interface and launch other programs within them. These nested programs are kind of cool to watch out because a lot of times you're always troubleshooting like, hey, what's causing this to crash? And this is a good way to find out. So I do this on a lot of systems just to kind of see, hey, what's going on with the system? Because when you're stepping up to a computer, you might not have touched in like six months or it might be someone else's computer or you're just, it starts doing something funky trying to troubleshoot that can be difficult just using task manager. That's why I really love a lot of these extra tools, you know, whether it's process explorer, or TCP view, Hey, just seeing what's being really chatty. And you can even drill down further than this. If there's a specific thing you're like, Hey, I'm getting a lot of bad traffic from a specific port. You could actually analyze that port using something called Wireshark, which I didn't actually show here. So you can actually do pretty much whatever you want with your computer. I just kind of want to give you a basic knowledge set of what it looks like to do a checkup on a computer just to see, hey, what's going on with it? Because so many people are just clueless of how Windows does what it does. And it's probably one of the biggest misconceptions of Windows. A lot of people are like, well, it's really not doing that much. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. And this just kind of pulls back that curtain a little bit to kind of show you what's happening because there's so many things and viruses take advantage of this. As a system admin, I've used this to my advantage multiple times. I've installed multiple programs for users and they didn't even know they were there. You know, they were like, call me up and be like, hey, I thought you were gonna install that program. I'm like, oh, I already did. It's already in your start menu. They'll be like, really? I hadn't even done anything. And they'll pull it up and sure enough, it'll be there. It's, it's stuff like that that's really cool. But at the same time, you need to be knowing what your computer's capable of and what Windows is capable of. And with that, I've, I've rambled on way too long, so I'm going to let you go. But I wanted to do kind of a more deeper dive than your traditional YouTube video that is meant for the masses. And for this one, I kind of just wanted to show a little bit of what it looks like when you drill down and kind of see a little bit more of what happens under the hood of Windows. Did you like this video? Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. And I might actually do more of these videos. I'd love to hear your opinion. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.